Let's look at some of the kinds of metals you might use in design and manufacturing and how you describe them, how you designate what they are. First of all, what is a metal? Well, it's held together by atomic bonds that are metallic. Um, there are three basic kinds of atomic bonds. Ionic, which you find in something like table salt, covalent, and metallic. And metallic means there's a cloud of electrons um, so, what, swirling around. Metals are made in a crystalline structure, so it's an orderly structure. It's ductile, which means it's not brittle. It's, uh, it will yield and, and uh, deform before it breaks. It conducts heat and it conducts electricity. Now, an element, as you probably know, is a material that you cannot break down any further. It has an atom that is the basic unit. So iron, here we are, iron is an element. Aluminum is an element. An alloy is something that combines elements. So for example, steel is an alloy because it combines the element iron and the element carbon and some other stuff. When you hear people talk about ferrous metals, what they mean is these are metals which contain iron. And so it could be wrought iron or cast iron or often steel. And steel is iron, some carbon, and then and a small amount of carbon, and then small amounts of other elements. Uh, which vary by the kind of steel you've got. We'll look at a list in a second. Carbon is what makes the steel strong and hard, or makes it able to be strong and hard. And in strength of materials class, um, at the end of the class there's a unit on metallurgy where you can look at some images of how carbon fits into uh, in between the iron atoms. So steel is basically iron plus carbon and um, mild steel has a very small amount of carbon. High carbon steel is tool steel. It has a little bit more carbon and then there are many many grades in between. Stainless steel also contains iron. Its primary other ingredient is chromium which is why it uh, is called stainless, it doesn't rust, but it also contains carbon and a bunch of other stuff. All right, now let's look at the classification systems for describing these metals. And there are two of them, ASTM and SAEAISI. <laughs> so let's just go through these. ASTM um, you, it used to stand for American Society of Testing and Materials. They have since become international, so now it's just some letters and they don't stand for anything. If you're familiar with any grade of steel, it's probably A36. That's an ASTM grade for mild steel. And by coincidence, it happens to have a yield strength of 36,000 PSI, if you've taken strength of materials class, you know what that refers to. But these ASTM grades, uh, they start with an A, and then they're just numbers, next available numbers. So the other grades of ASTM steel don't match their yield strength. Mild steel is the most common steel you encounter. Here are some other ASTM grades, some higher strength steel. Uh, A588 is, the brand name is Core 10. That's that weathering steel that looks rusty. Uh, A572 and 514 are some high strength steels. And there are, as you might imagine, many others. Let's look at the SAE AISI numbering system. Let's see, SAE, you probably know, Society of Automotive Engineers. AISI, American 
Institute of Steel and Iron, I think, is what it stands for. So um, this numbering system uses four numbers. The first one means what kind of metal is it. So if it's carbon steel, it will start with a one. Then the second number is the primary alloy and about what percent it is. And then the last two numbers are what percent of carbon in hundredths of a percent. So let's go on and look at some examples. For example, and here's a list of the types of uh, materials. 1O or 10 is plain carbon, as you can see. So if you have a steel with 1020 written on the end of the bar, that means it's plain carbon steel. There is no major alloy. So 1, it's carbon steel, 0, there is no major alloy, 20, it's 0.20 of 1% of carbon. Here's the list a little bit bigger. Um, if the number starts with a 41, that means this is a chromium molybdenum steel. If it starts with a 5, that means it's a chromium steel, and so on and so forth. These materials listed here are the primary alloy after um, iron and carbon. I threw in a couple of charts from a manufacturing engineering textbook uh, just for you to have them for reference in the future. Some a common numbers like there is good old 4140 and what they might be used for. Here is the same sort of thing for stainless steel. Now in terms of cast iron and other stuff I just uh, put in some information for you here. In many jobs you don't work with cast iron. There are a few companies where you might work with it a lot. You might a draw um, a drawing for the pattern maker and it gets sent to the foundry and you're going to cast some some part. So here's some information for you and a table out of that uh, manufacturing engineering book about the types of cast iron. Let's look at aluminum just a bit. Aluminum has its own numbering system. So uh, it comes from the Aluminum Association and then ANSI um, coordinates the numbering system. And there, the first number is the major alloying element after aluminum. And of course aluminum is an element. These other alloys make the type of aluminum. Here is a chart out of that manufacturing engineering book. And I would like to call your attention to well, first of all, just look over here along the right side of this chart. So this whole chart has to do with aluminum. And over here on the right are the types of uses that are common for the different grades of aluminum. Notice that you see aircraft structures in several places in here. Think about airplanes. They have to fly high in the sky um, they have to get up there, and weight is a big, big issue. If you made an airplane out of steel, it would be way too heavy. You'd need a gigantic engine. So airplanes are made out of aluminum. Well, right off the bat, that tells you, ha, there must be grades of aluminum that are pretty strong. Um, you also find aluminum used in various kinds of truck frames and car frames and other kinds of uh, high strength stuff. So let's look at this one common grade of aluminum, 6061. 6061 is a common aluminum and often you see 6061-T6. T6 means it was heat treated. So 6061 is aluminum with a particular strength that was heat treated. What's interesting is it is almost the same tensile strength, yield strength, as good old mild steel. 
So let's look at, in this last slide, we'll look at a chart from the Strength of Materials class. You may or may not have taken that class yet, but here's a chart from that class's textbook. And here we see mild steel, there's A36. Its yield strength is 36,000 PSI. Further down, here is 6061 T6 aluminum. So it's that grade of aluminum that's heat treated. And its yield strength is 35,000 PSI. So nearly identical to mild steel and yet much lighter in weight. The thing to notice though, if you're familiar with, if you've been in strength of materials and you're familiar with modulus of elasticity, that measures the stiffness of a material. And now you see a difference between these two. Here's the modulus for mild steel, 29 million. Here's the modulus for 6061 aluminum, 10 million. So what we see is that um, while they have the nearly identical strength, steel is stiffer, aluminum is more flexible, more floppy. So there we are. That's a, a quick tour through metal designations.